Great to see you. Wow, what a turnout. Lovely. What a wonderful day as well. Hey, guys, nice to see you. Don't, I won't tell them you're here. <laughs> I'm only playing with you. How many of you have known me for longer than 10 years? Wow, a lot of you, hey? Wow. How, how many of you have never met me before? Shame, I'm sorry for you. <clears throat> I always say this, if you think I like myself, you have no idea. I, <laughs> I really like me a hang of a lot. And uh, I, I stay away from mirrors because it gets complicated, you, you know what I mean? I love telling jokes, and uh, each service so far I've told is one really good joke. Um, that means you've got to laugh a lot. You, you understand, right? Don't embarrass me now. <laughs> a little girl in the, in the class is uh, telling the teacher that... Um, Jonah was swallowed by a whale. And the teacher says that is an absolute impossibility. Whales are not structured so that they can swallow people. And so you're incorrect. Your Bible is not correct. She said, I know that Jonah was swallowed by a whale. The Bible says so. Well, it doesn't say so. It says he was swallowed by a big fish, right? Anyway, so she's adamant and the teacher says, <clears throat> well... I'm telling you, you're incorrect. She says, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. And she says, so what if he goes to hell? She says, well, then you ask him. <laughs> I love it. We're so excited. Um, my wife and I have believed for many years for property to build an apostolic training center. How many of you remember that? The good news is we have got the property. We have bought it cash. Um, it's a long story, but we, we sold nearly everything we had and we've now got it. And uh, it's right north of Chiang Mai in Thailand, 70 kilometers north of Chiang Mai in a place called Changdao, and uh, we're right in the midst of mountains, uh, elephant safaris, bamboo rafting, bicycle trails, hiking trails, it's fantastic. And so we're going to build a, a great property. And uh, I, I encourage you to, to remember us in prayer. As soon as I mentioned that, three people came forward and said we would like to sow into that and has, have already given us $13,000 to be able to do what we have to do. That's brilliant. So we're very excited, and uh, we're just going to keep going for it. I might look like I'm getting older, but I'm getting tougher. Come on, you guys. <clears throat> the apostle Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, that we have a like precious faith. We live in a faith that believes God for great things. You cannot call yourself a believer that's walking with God if you do not believe God for what you can't see. If you're a person that is constantly living within your circumstances and within your means, then I want to challenge you today. You've got to build your faith. You've got to start to believe God for much more. You've got to start to become a person that is putting a, a demand on the promises and the goodness of God. Peter goes on to say, you've been given great and precious promises, whereby you become partakers of the divine nature. He says that you've been given all, have been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. You and I are extremely blessed people. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. There is no reason 
that we shouldn't be living way above the normal human being. There is no reason that we shouldn't be seeing the miraculous every week of our life. I walked into a restaurant the other day with a young man that I'm mentoring um, in Waterbury. And uh, as I walked in, I saw the lady behind the counter was a, a, a young lady that had come to one of my meetings a number of years ago. And so sort of just, hello, how are you? And as I looked at her, the Lord said, you need to bring her the word, the, the word of the Lord. And so uh, when she came with our, our food and put it on our table, I brought the word of the Lord to her. And she started to sob uncontrollably. She said, this morning when I got up, I said, Lord, I cannot face another day. I will not be able to, to face tomorrow if you don't speak to me today. And just by chance, we walked in on her. And because we live in the realm of the miraculous, we're always looking for God to access us and use us as an extension of his ministry, right? That's how we should live every single day. We should live in a realm of faith. We should believing, be believing God for what we have not got. If you've settled down in your faith, I'm challenging you. Catch, catch a wake up. Speed up. Because when Jesus returns, there's, there's one statement he makes. He says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find what on earth? Faith. He's going to be looking for those who have faith. When the world points a finger at you and says you're going to go down, everything's going to collapse around you. You point a finger back and you say, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. So Peter talks and he says, in verse 5, he says, you need to add to your faith a list of things. Faith is great. But, but to have an ongoing, he says, you, to be a person, if you add these things to your faith, you will never stumble. If you add these things to your faith, God is going to grant you such an incredible entrance into his everlasting kingdom. It's you and I adding to our faith, not just walking in faith, but making sure that there's wings to our faith, that we live in a way that is uh, supernatural, outstanding, and everyone can see we're not like everybody else. So he says the first thing that you've got to add to your faith is virtue. Virtue means moral excellence. This world today, I don't know about you, but when I was young, uh, it was embarrassing to see anything on television that was to do with nakedness or sexuality. How many of you remember those days? Well, those days are gone. Today, if it hasn't got it, we're irritated. You can't sell anything unless there's a, a naked body on there. There's become such pressure for us to live in an immoral world and count it as normal. There's such pressure on young men, specifically, to be able to walk a pure life. I don't judge young guys that are struggling with pornography. I help them. I don't judge them. This world puts such pressure on you. I went to boarding school. I know what I'm talking about. And so we need to understand that that God's standards, ladies and gentlemen, is that we add to our faith moral excellence, outstanding uh, behavior with the opposite sex. Uh, one, of the pastors I know, <laughs> one of the pastors I know uh, gave me a big hug the other day. We were saying goodbye to each other, and he hit me four times on the back. And I said, what's that all about? He says, I am not gay. So then we chatted a little longer and went on and I put my arms around him and I hit him three times. Cluck, cluck, cluck. He says, what's that? I said, I am gay. <laughs> I'm a lot bigger than him, so he got a little nervous. <laughs> we laugh, but, but really we live in a world where we need to put on in our behavior 
a, a purity that is, is undeniable. That a woman should never feel nervous with us. Do you understand? There's, there should be no sexual pressure, no flirting, no double standards with our tongues. That woman uh, realize that they, they themselves can create a lot of pressure. I learned years ago that a spirit of lust is a spirit that makes you want to, to, to engage with a member of the opposite sex. So when you feel pulled towards a person and can't get them off your mind, it's probably a spirit of lust that's operating on you. And it's on them and it's drawing you. Do, you. do you understand what I'm saying? We need to make sure those things are never on us. We should never fantasize. We should never long after uh, 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 being beyond our own home. Your wife and your husband should be all you need. Somebody say amen. I'm a bit worried. Nobody's saying amen. <laughs> it's not funny to play games uh, outside when you're traveling. You shouldn't live two lives. My wife sends me off almost 10 months of the year. She says, Jenny, I trust you. Praise God. <clears throat> and she adds, and remember, Jesus will show me if you play games. <laughs> and she's right, I know. <laughs> she's coming next month with me. Praise God. How many of you have met my wife? Oh, so few. My wife's not a person, she's an experience. <laughs> she is full of God. She is full of faith. She is one of the funniest people I've ever met. She's hysterical. She's godly, she's clean, she's pure. What a joy to go home. Moral excellence. I ask you a question, honestly. What are you like privately? What are you like? What goes on up here? What, what, what do you do with other people of, of the opposite sex? Are you, are you thought of, of as extremely clean and pure? Or do people know that you are pretty much an easy touch? Are you one of the men that, that uh, are always playing around with uh, the, the woman that you work with? Or do you treat them like sisters? You've got to add to your faith moral excellence. You've got, to, you've got to know it's not good enough just to believe God for great things. It's not good enough just to have a great ministry. It's not good enough just to heal the sick and cast out demons. It's not good enough to be on TV. It's not good enough to write books. It's not good enough. What pleases God is moral excellence. And we're going to be that type of people, amen? Amen. We're going to change what's going on in the background. We're going to get rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there. Whatever comes in, we're going to watch it. Your eye gate, your ear gate, watch it. Make sure that nothing gets past you that would embarrass you if Jesus was next to you. I understand being a man. You know, some women are, are really beautiful. Sometimes they, they dress in a way that you're not sure if it's a dress or cellophane. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Straighten yourself out, boy. It's, being drawn to beauty is no problem. But fantasizing... Locking in, having yourself uh, uh, um, connected to that is what we don't want in, in, the, in the kingdom. We've got to be able to walk in a way that causes our home to have the blessing of God on it. 
and we're not embarrassed. The second thing that I love in this portion of scripture from verse 5 of 2 Peter chapter 1. If you've got your Bible, you, you read it, okay? It says, add to your faith virtue, and it goes on, knowledge and godliness and perseverance. The next one I want to talk about is perseverance. I'm concerned today that we do not have the, the strength of character that we seem to have had in the years past. It's like people have become soft. You, you know, to, to push in and to, to, to go for what's yours, no matter what it looks like, requires perseverance. Amen. You understand, my wife and I have nothing. We, we don't have anything. We have no income. We have no guarantees about anything. But from the beginning, we have pushed in for everything that is ours. We have believed it, and we, to make sure that we get it, we never stop pushing. Oh, man, it's tough sometimes. I want to tell you, we're putting our daughter into a, an American school in, in a month's time. We faced unbelievable odds that she would never get in. Today, in fact, yesterday, yesterday, day before yesterday, Friday, I paid off the last of a massive amount for her annual school. You have to pay everything before you go to school. I had to pay the whole lot before she is accepted next month. And on Friday, I gave them the last amount cash and they put a big fat zero on amount owed. I want to tell you that in December, when we started this, we were desperate. We had nothing. There is no way we could do it. And the first thing they did was accept her. They've accepted her younger than they normally do. The next thing that happened is they said, once she's accepted, we want a deposit immediately within the week, $3,000. Man, I didn't have 300 baht, forget about $3,000. A brother emails me, says, I would like to give you a gift, but uh, I want to deposit it in a place where I can get a tax return. So I said, I know just the place. <laughs> I contacted the school, I said, would you be willing to do that? They said, if, you, if the board believes that, that's, that you're in desperate need, we'll do this. I said to him, how much do you want to give? He said, I'd like to give you $3,000. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think the school thinks I'm loaded. I mean, I'm just paying for everything as it comes. Perseverance. We're not giving up. Right now, we are facing a visa challenge. They think she's going to be adopted here. They are fighting us because it looks like, you know, this child um, trafficking thing. And we have to really push to prove that she is legitimately coming to the school. I'm telling you, it is, when you're facing the U.S. Embassy, it's a big deal. They won't let you phone them. They won't let you email them. But inside, we have what's called perseverance. We are not of those who turn back. We are pressing on to inherit the promises. We're going to get her into the school. And she will arrive on time. Somebody say amen. amen. We refuse to accept. We refuse to accept that God's blessings will not come through. Perseverance. I believe most of us do not see what we should see because we give up halfway. We give up halfway. If the going gets tough, we, we duck it. Not us. We add to our faith perseverance. Amen. We're going to be people that push in until we get what God promised us. We are not going to stop until our kids become what we said they would become. We're not going to stop until our marriages become what we said they're going to become. We're not going to stop until we get a financial breakthrough that gets us through. I'm amazed at the one guy who looked for a loan. He went to 19 banks before he got his loan. That's perseverance. 
Most of us give up after the second one. There's a way we should never accept no from the blessings of God. We should believe God will bless us. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but it is the violent that take it by force. Amen. We've got to get tough, guys. I wish I could get young men to come and train with me. I would, I would love to start like a, 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 a military training camp for young men. Scare the living daylights out of them. Get them to a place where they, they get character, they get guts. Not sit on a flipping little phone all day. <laughs> I can see you understand my language. <laughs> the third thing I think is, is critical to add, I'm not doing them all, I think the third thing that's critical to add is what's called brotherly kindness. I don't know that we, we look after each other the way we should. I don't know that we care. I don't know that What's your name? Yi. So how do you spell that? Very nice name. My name is Young. It's a nicer name, but yours is not bad. <laughs> if Guy and I became good friends, our, our hearts connect. Where are you, Noah? There's Noah in the room. No, Noah's not in the room. The guy on the keyboard. It's my friend. He's a young man that I met many years ago when he was a little pipsqueak. And he's grown up to be a big young man. <laughs> but if we become friends, our hearts connect. We really care for each other. No matter where I am, I carry you in my heart. No matter what you go through, no matter how you fail or achieve, I carry you in my heart. I believe what we have in the church today is not confidence. We have constituents, people who agree with us on a subject. But after they finish getting all they can out of you, then you dumped. And they move on to the next guy who's going to give them something. Like bloodsuckers. You know, sometimes we get too big and we forget who we connected to. I've made it a commitment in my life from the very beginning of my ministry that I do not forget my friends. If I say I'm your friend, I, I, whenever I see you, you will not get the feeling that I'm distant from you. I don't become a big deal Right, Brian? I don't become a big deal and forget that this couple helped me in my darkest hour. I don't forget that. Have they got failures? Sure they have. Have they missed it in life? At times, I'm sure. But I'm not connected to them because of what they do. I'm connected to them because of who they are. My heart was joined. Pastor Nick is one of my best friends on earth. I think he's one of the, the greatest men. He's humble, he's quiet, he's clever, he's intelligent, he's godly. I believe, I believe he deserves care. I believe he and his wife need to have the support and the love of us that they never feel alone stuck out there in Danbury. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Pastor Glenn, I can never forget how kind this man was to me. I can never ever turn my back on Pastor Glenn because he's my friend. And my job is to find opportunities and ways of giving him brotherly kindness. 
You know what I mean? To, to when I see you. Uh, give me a hand, Deborah. When I see you, my heart jumps. And I, I say, Clifford, it's always been a pleasure. Louise, it's always been a pleasure. I really mean that. What a lovely family. They've got great kids. Yeah, they come and, 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 and listen to that. I hope it's because they saw I was preaching. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be hurt. <laughs> I know, I know. But I'll never forget. I'll never forget the first day I walked into your church and how you walked up to me and made me feel like a million dollars. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget how you ran around me. I thought this woman never stops. Here's some water, here's this, here's that. Do you need anything else? It's like, wow. Loved him from the beginning. So many of you in this room, my heart is connected to you. Iris, it's wonderful to see you guys. You're precious people. I wish I lived here. I'd come and eat your food. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? This isn't church for me. This is my family. But we treat it like church. Give eight people a hug, 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 gone. No time to look into the eyes. Say, how are you doing? Are you okay? Is everything going okay for you? Is, is, there, is there anything I can do? Lord, when I wake up on Monday morning, Lord, I just felt moved by my sister and my brother, and I, I'm just going to email them and just let them know I care. Hmm? Or are we so professional as Christians that we, we just know how to do this stuff? Is it plastic or is it real? Hmm? Are we aware of each other's needs? Or, no, don't tell me because I've got enough pressure on my life already. I've got to tell you something. That the real sign that we are Christians is that we love one another. Yeah. Not that I say, how are you? Nice to meet you. Let's forget that. I'm talking about love. I've been around a long time. Pastors all over the world love me while I'm bringing them what they need. As soon, out of sight, out of mind. You wouldn't even think they ever knew me. I'm not bitter. Just want to knock their heads off their shoulders. <laughs> I mean that. I'm talking about 12 years of coming here. That when I'm not here, it, it, no one even thinks. And I'm alone in Thailand, no church, no, no fellowship, no nothing. Do you think that's hard? You better believe it. If we're going to encourage each, anything, we've got to encourage each other. That's all. We've got two of ourselves. My wife and myself encourage each other. Hardly ever do I get a, a contact. And I, please don't send me a lot of emails. I, I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? You, you would hope that somebody, thank God there are somebodies, but you'd hope that the people that you pour your life into would not look at you as a visiting minister, but would treat you as a godly friend. Amen. That no matter how life changes or how relationships change, you still remain precious. Amen. So after all, what have we got on this earth except the love that people bring us? I can talk like this. Nobody pays my salary. So I don't care. I really, I don't care what people think about what I say. I, I'm the best person to tell you it as it is. 
How loving are you? Hmm? Or you just like being in the limelight. If, you, if you've got something to do, then you're all buddies with everybody. But if you're not included in the team, now you're not friends with anybody. If you've got people under you, are they dispensable? People that have given their life for you. Are they dispensable? Just get rid of them. Ignore them. They'll understand. I don't think so. Add to your faith brotherly kindness. The last thing I want to say. I'm on time. Huh? Okay. Last thing I want to say is this whole issue of having faith is that we understand that God is not a God of tomorrow. One day he will maybe, if he feels like it, do it for me. God's not a God of the past. That all our testimonies of God's goodness comes out of 5, 10, 15 years ago. God is a God of now. God is a now God. God wants to do a miracle for you now. God wants to give you a breakthrough now. God wants to break into your situation now. God does not want you one day to hope it will all happen. You need to make a decision in this room today that God is going to move into what you're facing right now. You need to claim it. You need to hold on to it. You need to believe it. God is for you. Who can be against you? God wants to change your financial burden. God wants to break into your, your life. Listen to me. I know that God can cause finance to pour to you if you'll believe him. Why wouldn't he? Do you think God gets a kick out of watching you suffer? No, I know it's, it's another thing if you waste money. I'm not talking about that. But if you're a sower, you're a giver. Do you think God doesn't take notice of that? You better believe he does. I'll tell you now, before I leave on Tuesday night, I have called in more finances. I mean, I've got a lot already. But I'm going to get more. Amen. You say, why? Because I want to do some great things for God. We bought the property and three people immediately connected with us, I told you. And have said, we will back you financially. That is amazing. I've already been given $13,000 to start building. It's not a hang of a lot, but I'm on my way. He's a now God. He's a now God. I'm not waiting till I get back to uh, Thailand for God to do something. He's going to do it now. Do you understand? That's how we need to walk. That's how we need to think. You need to be aggressive in your faith. You need to go for the big things. You need to believe God's going to stand by you. You do do not live like you've always lived. Take it to the next level. Believe God for your marriage. Believe God for your kids. Believe God for your finances. Believe God for your business. I believe that God blesses us. He's already blessed us. But if we will receive it, he will change our businesses now. If we will receive it, he will change our marriage now. I want to bless you before I go. I want you to receive something from me. I have the authority to bless you. Based on Genesis chapter 12, who I blessed will be blessed. So if you'll reach your right hand out right now, and you will name what you need, you will believe for the area God must break into. Then in the name of Jesus... I bless you with a manifestation of the love and the power of God that God will supply to you in a way that you have never seen your whole life. I declare that the rest of this year will be filled with manifestations of God's goodness to you, that he will break into your home today, that as you walk back into that house, the atmosphere will change. 
that you will find that your children are starting to long after God. That you start to find that, that those sicknesses that are on your body are being healed one after the other. In Jesus' name, I bless you with health, finances, strong relationships, and outstanding opportunities for His kingdom. In Jesus' name, we all agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.